Hello, everyone. If you're on Blog Talk, okay. Hello, everyone. I'm hoping I am live on Facebook right now. Facebook has a new system, and I cannot tell if I am live. It says I'm live. Let me know if I'm live, <laughs> okay? If anybody's there, let me know. I don't know where the comments are going to show up because it is a totally new system. So, welcome, everybody. I am Colleen Van Desiden, as I said, and this is Lilydale Radio. The name of the show is called Embracing Your Essence. Uh, it is uh, sponsored by Lilydale, and there are several other Lilydale radio shows as well. We have, oh, thank you, Deb. I tell you, technology, it seems like every time I turn around, there's something new here. So we do have other Lilydale radio shows as well. Willa has a show, Willa White, on Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. At 8 p.m. on Wednesday, we have John White. Yeah, I said that right. All of a sudden, I was wondering, did I say that right? Yeah, John White is at 8 p.m. on Wednesday, and Celeste Elliott is Thursday at 10 in the morning. I wanted to get those out. Thank you, Darlene. Thank you, Deb. I do appreciate that so much. Uh, it's just one of those days, apparently, and it is a full moon, so who knows what we're going to be talking about here. So today, I am going to be talking about reimagining your life. But before I get to that, I do want to do all the details of things. You can reach me at my website, ColleenVanderZyden.com, or a quick link, PsychicMediumColleen.com, LilyDaleism org and you can find out what's happening for the season the summer season assuming everything goes according to plan we are still planning to open as normal at the end of june and i saw the monks are coming this year again so that's going to be exciting and wonderful so check the website out lilydaleassembly.org you can find out about everything that's coming and lilydale assembly incorporated and facebook and you can find out events there as well. Uh, follow my page, please, Colleen van der Zyden, Medium and Intuitive Life Coach. And I do want to tell you, I started a new group called Spiritual Growth and Support. It is connected with my page. Anyone can join. We are going to talk about spiritual growth, obviously, spirituality, meditation, whatever we need to talk about to help people on their spiritual path. So everyone is welcome. Share the idea. Let people know. So today we are going to be talking about reimagining your life. We are in this time now, of course, of isolation and um, social distancing. And we can use this time rather than focusing on the negative and spending all of our time looking at the news or the Facebook feed, we can consciously connect with the vision of the life we want to create, the life we want to have. We are always learning and always growing. And we have a choice uh, to choose our direction. Or we can mindlessly allow our life circumstances to define who we are and how we live. We would rather not do that, I have a feeling. So we have this power of creation, which is demonstrated by our free will. We all have free will. We can choose our direction, responses, our actions, anything we want to do. However, right now, because of the situation we're in, everything has been stripped away. Everything we've been used to, is is not there anymore anything we've been used to physically so many of us are staying home other people are going to work in uh, more dangerous uh, situations than they've ever had to before uh, more people have lost people people are losing their identity as they lose the sense of going to work and having that job or having things be more normal for them We've lost the freedom to do what we want to do. And this can be very distressing for people. With all our routines being gone, we're unbalanced, insecure, confused, don't know what we're doing half the time. Uh, Leanne is saying, I'm having a blast getting to know everything I possibly can about my next step. Yes, you know, it is interesting because this is a, a great opportunity for us in our own personal self growth um, and not to diminish the, what we're all experiencing otherwise, but we want to focus on the positives and things we can control rather than getting sucked into the other stuff. So today, if you're just joining, this is Lilydale Radio. I'm Colleen Vanderzyden, one of the mediums at Lilydale, and I'm also an intuitive uh, life coach, a certified coach. And so I help people live their best lives. And today we are talking about reimagining your life, using this time of isolation and distancing to decide what kind of life you want to have when this situation has concluded because we are all going to be different. We don't want to take residual negative effects with us in that new life that we're going to be creating. So rather than allowing, than allowing everything to overwhelm you, uh, it's time to think about this. It's time to dig deep to our soul, to reconnect with our light. 
to consciously take some time to reinterpret our life. What are your priorities? Um, what's important for you? You want to make that decision rather than just letting it happen. Now, that's not to say that we're not guided. We make decisions and we may be influenced as we go by spirit, God, circumstances, whatever it is, we may be influenced. But as long as we're taking some definitive action towards creating the life we want to have, we are going to create the life that is amazing for us. So what I'm going to do today is, I'm just checking to make sure everything's still working. <laughs> Look at how you've grown, yes. Um, what I'm going to do is use my favorite life analogy of a lighthouse, and I'm going to reinterpret it a little bit to help you reimagine your life. Sometimes it helps if we have something uh, to shape these uh, thoughts and ideas as I give you new, uh, new ideas here. So using this analogy, what is a lighthouse? We all know what a lighthouse is, right? It's a beacon of light, right? At its core, its purpose is to be light and guide others. It is what it is and doesn't try to be something else. It doesn't force people to change course, uh, but instead illuminates their path, providing clarity for them. The light is there for everyone and anyone. It's connected to everyone. Okay, that's the lighthouse. That's the purpose of a lighthouse. Now, at the soul level, you also are light. You are who you are and you have, should have no need to be someone else. As you strengthen your connection to that unique light that is within you, you're illuminating your life path. And when you do this, you're positively affecting other people, not just yourself, but you're positive, positively affecting others as you walk your path. You're allowing your light to be there for others, for yourself. It's just a part of who you are. As you do this, you begin to recognize more and more that we are one, that the light we have is shared by everyone. And as we strengthen our connection to the light, other people's lights are also going to be strengthened and become brighter as well. This light, this love, is the God energy in the form of you. At your soul level, you are the light, the love, the God energy. That's who you are. Now this light, this love, is the foundation of you. The foundation of a lighthouse. If you've ever been in a lighthouse, I love lighthouses, I climb them as much as possible. <laughs> if you've ever been in a lighthouse and gone on a tour or something, they explain to you about the foundation. The foundation of a lighthouse is feet thick, 12 feet, 15 feet, 20 feet, very thick. It's solid, it's unmoving. It's what holds up the whole lighthouse, which can go many feet into the air, as you know. The lighthouses are designed to withstand the greatest storms. Okay, you with me so far? Your light, your love is your foundation. It is solid. It is unmoving. It's not going to leave you. Whether you believe you are a form of the God energy, whether you believe you are love and light doesn't make a difference because you are. It's the way it is, it's just a fact. So you are this already. And this love and light is here to support you as you handle your own adversity, your challenges, your problems, uh, the storms of your life, if you will. And to even take that a little bit further, I'll have fun with this analogy for a second here. It can be like, you know, when we have a problem, we feel like we're battered by waves and we're going to be dragged away and we're gonna go out there and we're gonna drown somehow. This love, this light, this foundation that you have actually protects you from that. It's empowering you, it's keeping you in your energy, basically. It's the foundation is so important, this love and light foundation. Now in the spiritual aspects of this, that's what it's all about here. Do you choose to connect with that love and light? Do you choose to expand your light and shine it as much as you can, strengthening its power, not only for yourself, but for other people as well? Because when you choose to do this, then you're in your light. So in reimagining your life, do you want to accept that spiritual aspect as being a part of who you are? If you do, it's as simple as saying to yourself, yes, I, I want that, I am that, and acknowledging that to be true. 
how do you live in your light? Okay, how do we know we're in the light? It's when we choose to look for the good. It's when we choose to live from the love, from the light. It's choose when we, it's time when we choose to be caring. You, we love all people, not just some. We choose to speak with high vibrational words. We choose to do the best we can. This doesn't mean that we succeed 100%, but we do the best we can to choose in it. When we understand this, we also understand that other people are living their lives to the best of their abilities to where they are at this point in their lives. They may not have a higher perspective. They may be stuck in the fear, the uncertainty, and the worry. We can't change somebody else. All we can do is accept them. We can't fix them. We can't tell them how they should change or what they should do differently. Um, we allow them to be, but what we do when we're living in the light is we, we view them with compassion and with empathy not with pity or superiority or being dismissive. This is when we're living in the truth of our love. Now, today I was on Facebook, which I'm trying to not stay on so much because, you know, sometimes, whoo. And somebody had posted a picture of a bunch of people crowded together on a train in New York City. And we all know we're supposed to be social distancing and all of that. But the comment that was made with it was very um partisan we'll say that very partisan so they took a picture and then turned it into something else and people had commented why are they doing that they shouldn't be doing that oh they're so stupid da, da, da. and i wrote a comment uh, against my better judgment in a way because i thought oh do i want to open myself up to this but i said you know maybe these people who are on this train are crammed on this train together because they work in grocery stores or maybe they work in a hospital and that's the only way they can get to their job. And immediately somebody said, well, yes, but they should be wearing masks. And I'm like, yes, maybe they should, sure. However, rather than looking at these people and judging them and automatically assuming something about them, it's better if we can choose a different viewpoint, one where we're using the love and light that's within ourselves and viewing them with compassion. Maybe they are out there helping us. Yes, maybe they don't have access to a mask. Maybe they don't even have a scarf to use. We don't know. So rather than judging someone, we want to live in that love and light and look at people with compassion and empathy. We don't understand where they're coming from. We don't know the facts. So the first step to decide if you want to reimagine your life is, do you want to be in the love and the light? Do you want to be in that space? If you only take one thing from what I'm going to talk about today, and I'm only gonna mention three things because I don't wanna overwhelm you with my thoughts. Um, three things, and this is the first one. Choose to live in the love and the light. It's the spiritual aspect. This is really the only thing you need. If you focus on that as much as you can, you will find your life is immeasurably improved. The more you think about it, how would I live in the love and light? That will help you decide how to act, respond. It might stop you from judging somebody else. And this does include yourself, making sure you're, you're in the love and the light of yourself. I will check the comments for a moment. Hello, everybody. Yes, my Facebook feed is different and it's throwing me off. Don't mind me as I look for you. I will see what I can do about that. Um, <laughs> Leanne is saying the good, the bad, and the are you kidding me in everyone. I got to accept it all. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So the first step, the spiritual. Choose if you want to, to live in the love and light. The second step in reimagining your life is to focus on the physical aspects. Back to the lighthouse because it's my thing. I love lighthouses. I love climbing those steps. I just love it. There are hundreds of steps to get to the top. We go round and round and round and we're holding onto a railing and we're climbing up. And every now and then we get to a spot where we can pause. Uh, we might have to catch our breath. Uh, usually the steps are very narrow. If you haven't been in one, the steps are very narrow. So there's not room for people to come down as you're going up. There's not room for two people next to each other. It's usually just enough space for one. So you're holding on to that. But every now and then there'll be these spots where there's level areas and you can get off the stairs for a moment, catch your breath. Maybe you'll meet some people there, whatever it is. The obvious analogies here 
is that with life, just as in a lighthouse, you're going round and round and round, and you may feel like you're not getting anywhere. You're taking steps, you're taking action, but you just keep going round and round and you think, this is never going to change. I'm never going to get someplace. But every step we take is important to our journey. Every single step we take, even if we think we're not getting anywhere, anything we do, we're still moving forward. Even if we're resting, we're still moving forward because we may be resting and catching up vibrationally. So we are where we need to be to who to be who we really are. It's just the way it is. I love these little facts things that I label as facts. So when we're walking in this lighthouse and we get those little resting areas, sometimes it is to catch our breath. And sometimes when we're in there, we might meet other people on our journey and we might say to them oh how was it up there or how are you doing or people might say oh you just only got a little bit left to go so we might encourage each other so it's important in life that we do the same thing we might encourage each other on their, our journeys we might say hey it's going to be okay don't worry you're almost there or look at how far you've come and we can help them recognize how much they've already done in their life path these times of rest too as we catch our breath sometimes we have these life pauses that's what we're doing right now. Now, this was a forced life pause on us. We didn't choose it intentionally, but we have this pause. This is a time for us to catch up to ourselves. We're catching up vibrationally. We may be learning things um, in this time. We could be connecting with our true selves, of course, right? So when we're walking on our life path, how do you want to spend your moments? You want to think about these questions a little bit. You want to decide what it is you want to have in the physical. Understanding that every step you take is getting you somewhere. You may think you have to go one step forward and two steps back, but you're still getting somewhere as long as you're maintaining that feeling of being open. And if you understand you're the love and the light, you've already got that support, that foundation below you that's supporting you as you take these steps, okay? So when some questions here, I guess, to consider as you think about how you want your life to be when this is completed. We're not going to go back to the way it was. It's not going to be the same, okay? And I know some people are thinking everything's just gonna go back to normal. In some ways, there will be a sense of normalcy, but I'm hoping, <laughs> I'm hoping that people are waking up and realizing the value of connection and realizing that we are all one. I'm hoping people will wake up to this idea. So in the meantime, as we are lifting ourselves up and are expressing our love and light and being that guide for other people, we are going to also consider the physical aspects of our life and how we want to walk our lives. So can you harness the power of choice to create the life you want to have? Think about it, just think about what you want and then start thinking about what steps you might take. You don't have to know the whole way to get there, just pick a step and move forward. With each step, you're moving in the right direction and the next step will be revealed to you. Mick is saying, this is a great opportunity, even a gift if we use it wisely. Yes, yes it is. So, do you need to take action to accept a pause? to take this time that we have and just move into the acceptance. Somebody said to me the other day, I'm having a really hard time seeing and thinking about the fact that we are going to be isolated till the end of the month. And I said to them, one moment at a time, one day at a time, don't get too far ahead. Use this time. Don't think ahead. Stay in the present. Pay attention to here. When you're climbing a lighthouse, you have to pay attention to the present each step you're on. You cannot look ahead at the steps that are coming. You cannot look back where you've been because if you do this, you could, step, you could trip and you could fall in a lighthouse, which is going to be disastrous because you're gonna go a little bit of a ways down before you hit the next flat area. So it's disastrous if that's the case. So you have to focus on the present. And here in this life pause, you can be focusing on the present moment, making the best of this situation. And for those of you who are experiencing um, the grief, the fear, the uncertainty, just remember to come back to your body. Just come back to your body and breathe. That's the quickest way to get back to the present. Okay, now another question. 
to ask yourself about the physical aspects of what you want with your life is what's important to you. What are your priorities? If you just dream about what kind of life you want to have, and this doesn't have to be limited to this situation, we can look at our whole lives and think, how do I want to live the rest of my life? How do I envision it? What are you doing when you see yourself in your mind? What are you doing? Who's with you? Where are you? Spend some time thinking about that. You can meditate on it. Uh, and what you're doing is you're opening your soul up and letting your soul guide you. Again, take the physical actions, but at the same time, stay open and allow the soul to be there for you. Is there some dream or goal that you've put off? And maybe now you're recognizing this is a pretty big priority for you and you want to get to it. Maybe you've decided you don't want to waste your time anymore um, in certain places. Maybe you spend too much time in... Okay, I just read this in a book the other day, and I'll tell you about this book maybe next time or, or another time. Uh, the Zone of Incompetence, where we spend our time doing something we're not necessarily good at, but we just need to do it when maybe we could delegate it or just not do it. So are we spending our time on things that really aren't giving us joy or pleasure, or we just think they're a waste of time or whatever? Maybe we don't have to do them. So what are your priorities? Figure out what it is. We are here in this physical life because we are meant to be enjoying this physical life. We are supposed to be having fun here. There is nothing wrong with having fun and enjoying our lives. That's why we're here. If we didn't come here and we stayed in heaven or the other side or whatever we want to call that space, then that wouldn't be important to us. But here, why would we be here? Except that we're supposed to be learning how to love this place and how to be ourselves in this space of who we are. <laughs> and Leanne is saying dishes. <laughs> She'll get rid of her dishes. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> okay, so do you need to, in the physical, connect with more people? Maybe you need a different community. Maybe you need to find some new friends. Maybe you realize that some of the people you've been talking to online are awesome people, but you've never met them physically. Maybe you'd like to meet them physically. Uh, again, maybe you do need to release some things uh, physically, mentally, emotionally. Maybe you want to create something. You've said to yourself for your whole life, I really want to do this. Or when I retire, I'm going to do this. Or someday I'm going to whatever. Don't wait. If you want to do something, this is the time to start taking action. Start planning it, Google it, figure out what you've got to do, figure out who's going to help you. Do you need a teacher? Do you need money? Do you need this? Whatever it is, start thinking about it. Start planning for it. As soon as you plan for whatever it is you need, you want, it will start coming to you. If you want to create something, say you want to, you know, learn how to paint or you learn how to want to play an instrument or something like this. Creating is so important in our lives for everyone. And so many people say they're not creative, but everybody is creative. We all have our own unique skills and abilities. But creation is when the soul is communicating. The soul is expressing itself through your creations. If you're painting a picture, and I'll use that because you know I like to paint. So if I'm painting a picture and I'm looking at it going, oh, that looks horrible. Oh, oh. I'm actually saying, oh, soul, you know, you're not really doing a great job today. But if I'm painting and I can get into that flow and just allow it to happen without judgment, without wanting it to be amazing, but instead enjoying the process, my soul is allowing me to allow it to create. I'm allowing the soul to come right through and create. Everyone can do this, whether it's something like painting or writing or whatever it is. So if that's something that you feel you've missed in this life or you want to emphasize more, do it. This is the time. So when you're reimagining your life, you want to make sure you're including that physical. Every step you take leads you to where you need to go. There are no wrong turns in a lighthouse. There are no wrong turns. You just keep going. Same thing in life. There are no wrong turns. I know somebody right now just said, but this happened to me. That was a wrong turn. And I'm going to disagree with you and say, no, it wasn't. Yes, it may have been unpleasant. Yes, maybe you didn't want it. But it has helped you become the person you are today. Every experience leads you to who you are today. Even the bad ones, <laughs> they do. So we want to look back at some of those things where we think we may have had a wrong turn and go, you know what? I think I needed that. 
I think it was important for me. I learned something important. Okay. So it's, I know it's hard to believe, um, but everything is here to help you at your soul level. Every mistake, every choice you've made, everything. Um, everything becomes a learning opportunity. Everything for you. If you can open yourself up to that perspective, oh, it's amazing. I was talking to a friend of mine the other day and I was telling him about some things that had happened in my life. And I, I don't have any residual emotional things with them now. You know, I can tell you this or that, and I don't get all worked up over something. And he was like, oh, I'm so sorry that happened. Oh, I'm so sorry that happened. I'm so sorry that happened. And I thought to myself, well, that's interesting. It's nice. Yeah, I mean, okay, thanks. But I, I'm not experiencing an emotional thing because I've recognized that out of everything has come blessings. Every single thing, there have been blessings. So being able to do that has helped me maintain my joy. And that is not to say that, of course, when something horrible is happening, that I'm not going to experience the negative emotions because I will experience them. I will get upset. I will be sad, whatever it is, if something happens. But I also understand on a bigger level that it's helping me in some way. It's a learning opportunity. And again, not to dismiss whatever happens, okay? We can't change some situations. So if we can look at them from a different way, we can feel better. So as we're doing this, when we're trusting God and spirit, which is what we're doing when we're living from our love and light, you see how I keep coming back to that? It's so important. This perspective of growing helps us reconnect to our soul, helps us live from our soul. We take action anyway, no matter what's happening. Even if we're scared, we're courageous. We take action and we just do the best we can. We're moving in faith and belief. We're moving in faith and belief, trusting that there is a perfection within our path. It's all good. Okay, so we've got two things I've talked about so far. We've got the spiritual foundation of your love and light. We've got your physical, the walls, so to speak, of your lighthouse as you traverse the steps and you're climbing to the top. And the third step in reimagining your life is the mental and emotional aspects. And what I'm going to emphasize with that will be our perspectives. Because our thoughts influence our perspectives, our thoughts and perspectives influence our emotions, okay? So we're going to look at things from a perspective now. So why do we climb lighthouses? Now I know why I climb them, even though it can be a challenge and a physical one for many people. The reason, hold on, somebody is sending me a message and it's popping up right here and distracting me. The reason I climb them is I want to get to the top. I want to experience the view. I want to be able to experience this expansive view to be able to see for miles and look at the bigger picture. When we decide to climb a lighthouse, uh, some people uh, may have some resistance for many reasons not the least of which is the challenge. It depends, you know, on how many steps there are. There could be, you know, 160 steps or there could be 560 steps. So we have that initial challenge um, and taking into consideration our physical abilities, of course. Um, but other reasons too, sometimes people just don't believe they can do it. It's too hard. They doubt it. They don't believe in themselves. And even as we can be on the steps climbing up, there may be mo moments where we think to ourselves, oh, you know, this is too hard. I don't want to do it anymore. I, I'm going to just turn around and go back down. It was easier down there. But as we're climbing this lighthouse, we are being drawn to the top. It's, it's like we're being called to the top here. On our life path, is this obvious, right? Don't you love when an analogy is obvious? On our life path, there are so many times where we resist what's happening. We want to go back to when it was easier. Sometimes it feels like life is too hard. It does, doesn't it? Sometimes we don't believe we can handle it. But we get this call, so many of us, and more and more people are waking up. More and more people are getting this call that there's more to life, that we shouldn't be letting our physical circumstances limit us in our joy and what we're doing here in the physical. We have this call, this inner call to connect to something greater, 
something at our soul level. level. And we know there's something bigger out there. Uh, we might question it, but we do keep going. And when we think about this, this initial resistance that we may have to our situation is perfectly normal to question, doubt, wonder if we're capable. But the telling moment is when we decide to take the step and do it to the best of our abilities, do it as best as we can to make that choice. Now, as we're climbing that lighthouse, okay, just like life, we will have an occasional window as we're climbing. And as we look out these windows, it's always fun to get to one when you're climbing a lighthouse because otherwise you're just seeing walls. So you get to this window and you wanna see what's out there. So we, but when we look outside, what we see is a very limited view. It's such a small little part. If we're still close to the ground, the items, the, the scenery, whatever it is around there could still be on the larger side. And if we didn't know better, we might think that that's all that there is, that that's the only truth, that that's the only perspective. And that's the same with our problems and challenges. It's a very limited view that we hold when we're looking at our problems, living our problems. If we're close to the problem, it's newer or it's big, um, it can appear huge and overwhelming. And, and we might focus on those problems so much that we actually make them bigger. And we might think that we, uh, that's all we're going to experience are these problems. We can't see past the problem. Uh, we can't see and recognize that there's, there could be something out there that's beyond that. It's just a, such a limited view. But when we get to the top of the lighthouse and the same as when we're journeying to our soul, exactly the same in my mind. Okay, journeying to the top of a lighthouse, journeying to our soul are the same. Because when we do this and we start to see and we get there, we start to recognize a more expansive view. We can respond then to our problems, our challenges, our circumstances with that love and light. We can choose to stay helpless and powerless and without self-responsibility, or we can choose to go a different way. We can blame how we feel on our life circumstances, or we can say, well, that's just you know how it is. I can't change it and, and, and be powerless. Or we can choose to reimagine our lives. We can choose to change our perspective and look at life from a much bigger angle, a much bigger angle. It's always our choice. As we're, we're journeying in our lives, Okay, a little bit of a recap here. As we're journeying in our lives, we always have the ability to choose our directions. The steps are there for us. They will be revealed to us. We don't necessarily, like I said before, have to know exactly how to get there. We just have to be willing. Oh, sorry, my cats are knocking something down and I didn't know what was happening. Um, sorry, total distraction. Um, I don't even know what I was saying now. Um, we can choose to live our lives the way we want to and let those steps be revealed to us. When we open our minds and our hearts to the understanding that really we are at our soul level, the love and light, and that it is accessible to us at all times, all times, there is nothing that stops us. Now this book, I'm gonna read the comment for a moment. No, you cannot let circumstances hold you back. Use them as opportunities to reach into your creativity to find a solution, yes. And that doesn't mean, of course, that we're gonna to try to force um, something physically. We, we can't do that, you know, I mean, you can go outside now and go go get on a very crowded train um, if you want to, but you may choose not to for your own health. Um, so you want to use everything as that learning opportunity. Now I'm just started reading this really awesome book and I've only read uh, a few pages in it, but it's called The Big Leap. And I will probably talk about this on a show at some point once I understand his concepts a little bit more. But he was talking, um, so far what I've learned is that he was talking about, we, we have this self-limiting belief inside ourselves. It's very, what he's talking about is very connected to my book and, and my, what I'm teaching in my book. And he's talking about we have this self-limiting belief where we subconsciously feel that we have a capacity 
um, for, uh, what shall I use? Uh, connecting to our soul. I'll use that as the example. That we have a, a capacity for connecting to the soul and we have like a glass ceiling and we don't realize we can go through that and connect at a deeper level. For whatever reason, you know, from our past circumstances, how we were brought up, our human conditioning, we somehow believe certain things. You know, some traditional religions say that um, we can't go to heaven unless we're saved. Okay, so that for some people could become a limiting belief that they cannot access the soul, they cannot go to heaven. Okay, so releasing those limiting beliefs allows us to move into that and to, to move past that capacity, that limited belief as to whether we can get there. So if you have a little bit of doubt about what I'm saying, that you cannot access your soul, there is probably some kind of a belief somewhere in there probably came from a long time ago that maybe tells you you're not worthy to connect with your soul. Or maybe you learned that God is over here, not within you. And the concept is hard for you to grasp right now. So just open your mind up to that because your light, your love, your soul will help you release this belief. So that's a thought, something to think about if you, you start to question if it's even possible. These are pretty high concepts here that I'm talking about, to be able to, to look at our lives from such a different perspective. This is an empowering perspective because when you can look at your life from such a um, vast view, you will be happier, you will have more meaning, you will have more purpose, you will be able to find your purpose, and your purpose is to find your love and light and shine your light to help guide others on their path. Again, you're not forcing, you're not telling them what to do. The lighthouse does not tell other people how to course correct. It's just a guide. You're just a guide. As you raise your vibration, you're raising the vibration of everybody around you, even people who are not in your physical presence. Each one of us is the in as, let me try that again. Each one of us in the collective whole is raising our vibrations and it is essential and necessary at this time that we do this. We need, and I don't like to use the word need, but I'm going to use the word need. We need to allow our souls to unfold, to raise our vibrations, to assist in this consciousness shift. We are at a tipping point now. We are at a tipping point and it's, it's essential that each one of us who are in the light working field raises our vibration as much as possible to help the world. Basically, I know that's a big, um, <laughs> it's a big assignment there for you, but all we have to do is do our best. That's all we have to do. We are not comparing with other people. We are not trying to be other people. We are doing what we need to do for ourselves as our best person, as who we are. We are all unique. Isn't that awesome? That's the way it's supposed to be. We're all unique. We need to love and accept each other and love and accept ourselves as well. Okay, so I have just prattled on and on as usual. You know how I love to talk. Um, so I want to remind you, um, I don't think I need to repeat all that, right? The summary, you've got it. If you watch that whole thing, you have got it. Lighthouse Foundation, love and light. Decide how you want your physical life to go and then check into your perceptions, your perspectives and get the bigger picture. So that'll affect your mental and emotional states and you will be happier. See, I could have done the whole show in a minute and a half, I bet. Okay, so I want to remind you about my spiritual growth and a support group that I have started on my Facebook page, Colleen Van Der Zyden, Medium and Intuitive Life Coach. Please follow me there. And if you want to join the group, we are just going to talk about all sorts of fun things. And you can ask questions in there, and I will be happy to give you um, uh personal answers as much as I can, unless I get, of course, like 100 questions a day, then it might take me some time. But I give you some answers. You have questions about whatever you want to talk about. I will be happy to talk about. The only rules we are going to have basically is no politics, uh, no advertisements, and just be nice. 
just be nice. That's all we need to do. And you can follow me there, of course, and on my website, ColleenVanderZyden.com, PsychicMediumColleen.com, as well. They are the same. Um, I am booking appointments for the summer. Um, of course, I'm booking appointments now as well, but for the summer, still in person, but you know, we'll just wait and see how this all plays out. I do feel that we are going to be there. Um, oh, and I should tell you, and I, I mentioned it last week, but I've got to make sure I say it now, is that, um, hello cat. Um, okay, you want to see the cat? This one is today. Thank you, baby. See you later. So what, um, in the summer, the workshops at Lilydale, many of them will be physically there. Uh, you can come in person, but others are also going to be online as well. Both, some will be both online and physical. Uh, so there will be options. So make sure you check the Lilydale page. You can get more information there, lilydaleassembly.org and see what's coming up. And so we are going to do our best to meet the needs of our audiences. Uh, fill, follow Lilydale on Facebook as well, Lilydale Assembly Incorporated. Um, I think I've covered it all. Have I covered it all? Um, okay. Anybody have questions? I got to figure out a way to, to move this around next week. Um, I'm looking at Stacy's comment. Excellent comment, Stacy. We need to be sure we keep moving up the steps of the lighthouse and not allowing ourselves to be stuck somewhere along the way. Yes. Yes. So like I was talking about with the resting points, so you might move forward and then you might find a time where you have to take a break for a minute and think, I just need to be right now and not, not move forward anymore. So you get that time, you rest, you catch up vibrationally, your inner self is catching up. I also like to call that an intermission where we're preparing for the next part. And then we step back on the path again and we keep going. So keep moving. Sometimes you feel like you're not moving, but you really are moving no matter what you're doing. It's amazing. I tell you, life is amazing, isn't it? Okay, that's probably a good point place to, for me to wrap up. So thank you guys for watching and listening. If you're on Blog Talk, listening there, I'm looking to see. I don't see anybody there right now calling in, thank goodness. So um, thank you so much for being here. I have had so much fun talking to you and sorry about my technological things, but at least everything worked. So we are blessed with that. And I will talk to you next week. No idea what I'm talking about because I'm just letting spirit guide me because it's all about our situation these days. So I'm sure they'll let me know something else. So this week, think about your life. Reimagine your life. Make the choice to take some thoughts and actions towards the life you want to have. That'll be amazing. You have a wonderful night. I will see you guys next week. Bye.